Hey, what's up, everybody? This is the MMA Talk Show, and we're back this week with an exciting episode where we get to talk with the two guys who will be fighting in the main events of Samurai MMA, the two last fights, the two title fights. It's going to be Kapra Pollock. It's going to be Maged Amo. And they're going to come to, to discuss these fights against uh, Mikhail Dufour and Alex Morgan. So really exciting episode for you. But as always, we've got a, we've got some news to touch upon. And the first news is concerning Samurai MMA because, man, ah, there was just some huge fuckery by the, the Athletic Commission in Quebec, man. To be honest, I'm just like, kind of getting through it i'm not getting through it at all but i'm i'm just getting a little less angry so basically what happened is that um on thursday uh, the promoter daniel lafon received a, a call from the, the the commission in quebec that told him that all the pro debuts on the card weren't gonna receive their license to fight so now they were asking themselves, why? How is that even possible? Why can't these guys make their pro debut on that card? And why do you tell us like two or three weeks before the event? Too? Why didn't you tell us that like months before when we announced these fights? But uh, basically, the commission has told them that the amateur fights in Quebec are not recognized anymore by them because... Uh, they're doing them on the Indian reservation. They're not doing them under the, the athletic commission. But the problem is that in Quebec right now, no amateur combat is legal. So amateur MMA is illegal. So that's why they got to go on the Indian reservation to do that stuff. It's the same thing for amateur kickboxing, amateur Muay Thai, amateur, everything that's not like federated, like let's say boxing. Boxing is okay because it's under the uh, the, Olymp the boxing committee, the Olympic boxing committee. So there's like a big federation for boxing that licenses the amateur fight so boxing is okay but muay thai kickboxing jujitsu when we do jujitsu tournament people from quebec they either go to oxbury in ontario to ottawa or before the pandemic we basically went to upstate new york we were doing like fucking tournaments in plattsburgh and saratoga springs in new york because we just can't do it in quebec because it's not legal so that's the problem with amateur fights they're not legal, so the amateur promotions are going on the Indian reservations where it's not the same laws that, 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 that work out there. And they do the amateur show, but the commission is not willing to accept the, uh, the amateur records of fighter again. So if you add like 20 amateur fights in Quebec and you go to be licensed in Quebec, they're going to treat you like if you're 0-0 zero, zero because they're not recognizing any of these fights. So the thing that they want to do it's either for fighters to go fight somewhere else in other provinces, and then when they come back with a license from another province and a pro fight, they're going to license them. The other thing that they want to do is like set up a camp. with. And that's I feel like that's so stupid. That's one of the worst bullshit I've heard. But they want to set up camps where they go and they just watch the guys work. Like, oh, do some shadow boxing for me. And if your shadow boxing is good enough, I'm going to let you be licensed for that fight. But... Of course, with the pandemic and all this shit happening, they don't have the resources right now to build this committee, to build the, the people that will go and evaluate the fighters so that they won't be able to license them in time for November 19th. So, man, that's fucking bullshit. Basically, they're basically the most ignorant and worthless and incompetent people I have learned learned about in my life man they're man i i just i can't even speak to you right now i'm losing my words because i'm just just thinking about it i'm mad i'm super fucking pissed off this is such fucking stupid ass bullshit that guys like tommy morrison who are double champs double amateur champs yanis has all same fucking thing got alan Giraud who just got revoked his license or refused his license on the card this fucking guys got like 15 amateur fights, he's won belts in two or three promotions, he's fought, he's fought across two or three weight classes. Same thing for Morrison, he did 125, he did 135, he won almost everything. Same thing for Yanis Hazor, it's such fucking bullshit. Why don't you let these guys be licensed for their pro debuts? They are qualified fighters, they are. And to be quite honest, I don't want to like build some some theory let's say it like that on things that i don't know about okay it's not an informed thing that i'm doing but when the mexican boxer died in quebec on my french podcast the, the sunday after i basically said that i was worried now because that event 
will create some changes within the commission because they just fucking let a girl with a losing record who got knocked out a month ago come to Montreal, get basically murdered. I don't want to say that because a poor girl who, who fought or she never wanted to murder the, the, the Mexican girl, but she fucking died. That's what happened. And now the commission, they're trying to, to react to that event. But these fucking people, they don't know fighting. They, they It's crazy, man. In Quebec, the, 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 the athletic commission is under what they call la rigide des alcools, des courses et des jeux. So the the commission for alcohols, races, and games, and by games, like lottery, basically. So they, they oversee all of that shit. And people that go work there, they're not people that go work for the athletic commission to, 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 to sanction fights. Most of the people, they don't know fights. They never seen fights. They don't really like fights either. They think it's brutal. They think... So, Basically, they're trying to react to the death of the boxer by not licensing pro debuts in MMA. And it's fucking stupid. It's fucking bad shit, insane, stupid, fucking crazy. Like, like I know most of you guys don't really speak French, but uh, like earlier Thursday, I, I had a, fr a rant in French on my channel. And man, believe me when I tell you that, man, is, the, the rant is basically swear words and a couple of words between them. But like it's... It's incredible, man. It's incredible. Oh, they are going to try everything for these events not to happen in Quebec. They hate MMA in Quebec. They don't want MMA in Quebec. And they don't know shit about MMA in Quebec. So they keep doing us wrong. They were always a really, really tough to deal with, really, really stressful. And it was always difficult to deal with the commission. But now man, it's gone to new heights. We've never seen that. And man, I just want to say one thing, though. Like, You know, in bad situations, there's always good that comes out of bad situations. And there was some good coming out of that situation. And that's why I want to give a big shout out to some people. First and foremost, my guy, Derek Clark from Fight League Atlantic, uh, provided us with a lawyer uh, for, for the commission, provided Samurai with a lawyer for the commission, provided him with help if needed. They, he's willing to, to bring the guys that are making their pro debut on his event, book them there so they can come back to Quebec with a pro fight and then be licensed and said like he will do that just out of the kindness of his art to help us the other man rob Vivers, matchmaker at btc who has all i've been in contact with and i've put in contact with many people like managers of the fighters or that these fighters just fell through and the promoter daniel and manu too and he's been doing great to trying to i know the card for the the, the the november 20 the day just after is kind of full but he's doing his best keeping uh, the names of the guys in note in case that like, someone falls through a fight falls through and they just need to go over there and basically uh, be a late minute replacement or he, like he'll really consider bringing the guys in Ontario for, for the BTC card. And that's the same thing uh, for Tarpsoft Fighting Championship, the, the, the Brawl by the Falls. I don't know if that's what it's called. The card on November, uh, November December 18th in the Niagara Falls. I've put them in contact with uh, Daniel too. And like all these people just are willing to help out, are willing to, to accept the guys, to do something to help Samurai out. And man, there was like so much, like, let's say beef or tension. And even Yann Pellerin, man, even fucking uh, Yann Pellerin and the guys at Samurai, they're, they're do that uh, new era, they're doing a lot to help uh, Strania Gavrilovic win his court case against the commission because that's an old another subject. But Strania was supposed to be on that card, but he's presently fighting against the commission in court to obtain his license because after he failed his drug test and he had a, a disqualification for uh, blows after the fight, uh, they decided that they were not going to license him anymore in MMA. And that's quite unjust in my opinion. So uh, New Era and Jan Pellerin, they're looking at the, the, the court case for Srania Gavrilovic and helping him in that manner. So New Era Samurai... Fight League Atlantic, BTC, Tarpsoft, everybody's working together. There's no beef. Everybody's trying to help each other out. And that's what we need in the MMA community. Good people that try to help each other out, that try to do everything for the promotions in other provinces to stay alive, to stay afloat. Because we need promotions in every province. We need fight in every province. And that's by helping each other out, by sending guys uh, for some fights and uh, letting them come back after. That's how you do it. And Fight League Atlantic, BTC, and Tarpsoft, and the guys at New Era with Jan Pellerin, 
they've really done a lot to try to help Samurai MMA and this really unjust and absolutely bad shit and sad situation. So major props to all these guys. Like I said, it's cool to see some good come out of the bad and the good are these people that are willing to help and willing to do their part and trying to, 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 to save what can be saved from that event. So just fucking bullshit. Samurai is now down to four fights, but like they're really actively trying to find other people to book for the the, 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 the the fights that I fell through that, uh, I'll say it again, it's Tommy Morrison, Yanis Hazard, Alan Girard, and Strania Gavrilovic. They're trying to find replacements. They're trying to find people to be in these fights so that they uh, they, they, they basically go, can go on with the event like, like if nothing happens. So we'll, we'll see what's next with that, man. I'm so bummed about that shit. They're really trying to do everything they can for it not to work. But we're going to make it work because everybody's working together and everybody's doing the most. Uh, try to save uh, uh, the event, basically. It was, man, hectic few days for me, for everybody. We're trying to put people in touch to do everything we can with our contacts for, for it to work, man, to make it work. And I I, I think we, we, we might do it, man. So if it works out, we're going to be really proud of ourselves. But just a big shout out to everybody that's willing to help, willing to participate. It wouldn't be possible without you guys. So thanks a lot for that. Real good guys at the BTC, at Fight League Atlantic. My man, Derek, always like... I don't know how many times I'm going to say it. Derek Clark, one of the best guys there is. So Tarps off, two shouts to you guys. Yan Pelerin, you were all these people. Big shout out. Support for the MMA Talk Show is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels and they just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the lawnmower 4.0. You are that right, the 4.0. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. That's 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code MMA Talk at manscaped.com. Just imagine shaving with a sleek, well-designed and optimized trimmer that makes shaving time your favorite time in the bedroom. I'm one of the first people to try the new 4.0 and I'm blown away by the performance. The craftsmanship and details on the 4.0 are next level. We've all witnessed horror stories in the bathroom where blood, sweat, and tears were shed while trying to maintain decent enough grooming for your little homies down there. And as men, there's only one part of our body that we never want to see bleed. And that's our balls. It happened to me more than once, but not anymore because with the help of Manscaped, I can now shave in peace and with the confidence that I will not shed blood while trying to keep my balls presentable. I can now be confident that whatever situations life puts me through, my balls will be well-groomed, in perfect shape, and ready to help me power through it all. Manscaped engineered the ultimate groin and body trimmer by focusing on intelligent functionality and an incredibly comfortable grooming experience. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. I now feel confident shaving my boys. This upgrade trimmer also includes a multi-function on and off switch that can engage a travel lock. It also gives you the ability to turn the 4000k led spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave the lawnmower 4.0 even allows you to customize your trim to additional guard lengths with sizes one through four did i even mention the wireless charging his new wireless charging system uses electromagnetic induction, which can help your battery last longer. Man, if you've been shaving with the same nut trimmer on your face, yeah, you've been doing it wrong. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to judge you at all, but no person wants to end up with pubes in their mouth. It's time to get your own ball air and body trimmer with Manscaped to make me time the best time and enhance your confidence with some nice smooth boys. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code MMA Talk at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code MMA Talk. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. So before we move on with the interviews, let's talk about some Canadian performances. Three fighters in action again this week uh, for three major promotions outside of the UFC. The first one was on the PFL championship the final the big final uh, on the prelim there was a pfl debut for julia bud the um, former bellator champion one of the best 145ers in the world she was there 
and she was fighting Clay, Caitlin Young, really experienced fighter. And like basically the story of that fight is, is Julia Bud's grappling. There was some striking exchanges here or there. I feel like Bud probably had the better of the striking too, but really uh, was her dominant takedowns and her dominant grappling that that really made it a super dominant win for her easy decision win. Like we've been used to Julia Bud, to be honest, if Kayla Harrison leaves PFL, you can probably sign the $1 million check to Julia Bud right now for next year. She's going to whip everybody in that weight class. And if Harrison stays, it's probably one of the only competitive fight for her. Like Julia Bud, Chris Cyborg, Amanda Nunes, that's the, that's, that's the competitive fight for Kayla Harrison right now. So there's one in the PFL with Bud. There's Bellator, Chris Cyborg, and then the UFC with Nunes. And we know that Kayla is a free agent now. So we're going to see when she, where she's going to end up. But like uh, Julia Bud looking good for uh, for her PFL run next year. Let me tell you, that was a good performance. Really dominant, like we're used to. Uh, one of the best at 145 and now 155. So big shout outs to Julia Bud. And then... There was Dustin Johnson at one championship in a really, really tough matchup. They put him up against Kirill Grishenko, who was a 4-0 undefeated heavyweight, quite recent heavyweight prospect. But the guy had defeated Umar Khan, the rug rug guy who fought in Aris, the huge Senegalese wrestler. So really hyped up, high-level prospect that Dustin Johnson faced. And... Um, Unfortunately for him, he did really good in the third round, but wasn't able to, to secure the two first round. The first round, uh, Grishenko was able to land a takedown, mostly dominate the ground on the ground for that round. Uh, second round was the crazy round. There, it was a really crazy round uh, because Grishenko did not land any takedowns, but landed like two or three huge spinning back fists, an amazing spinning elbow, some huge elbows in the clinch, some big uppercuts, and like to be honest, the fact that Dustin Johnson did not get finished by that just shows like he has one of the greatest chins in the division and it's one of the toughest guy in the heavyweight division and Grishenko put so much into these attacks that he absolutely gassed himself out and the third round was all Dustin Johnson you can really see him come out with the combinations on the feet really be the the fresher fighter the guy who like absorbed all that damage but was still able to be there in the third round and to be the fresher fighter in the third round so yes it's a loss for dustin johnson his first ever but man it's a good performance against one of the better prospects in the world so i, I hope he's proud of himself because it was one of the greatest fight we've seen this year it was super exciting and the comeback in the third round was really significant and there's something you can really be proud of and build upon for his next fights and finally uh, we had KB Buller in uh, UAE Warriors and man he was fighting Tarek Suleiman, a uh, guy from Syria, I believe, who is a black belt in jiu-jitsu, a really good uh, heavyweight and light heavyweight grappler. Uh, they were fighting at 195, I believe. Uh, I may be wrong on that, but still, KB uh, got taken down, got his back taken, and like it wasn't looking like it was going to go too well for KB. Uh, but then he was able to kind of turn it around and get back up and land a couple of good kicks, and then, whoa, another takedown, and he got his back taken again. And once again, he was able to rise up, but like as he rose up, Basically, his opponent was grounded, and as soon as his opponent just took his hands off the mat, he, he just pulled a Peter Jan basically on him. He, he kneed him straight in the face and even followed up his knee with some ground and pound. So, uh, unfortunately, the Tarek Saluman was not able to continue, and it was a clear and egregious foul uh, by, K, by KB Buller. So, unfortunately for him, uh, he got disqualified. That's what happened. Uh, he got disqualified in that fight. So, uh, it's, a, it's a loss for him. His first outside of the UFC ever, basically. Uh, but, man, like, yes, it's a loss. Yes, he was probably losing the fight up to that point. But, you know, with the knees dead and stuff, it, it's a foul. It's 100% a fault. You shouldn't have done that. But we all know it's a contested rule. And we all know how people kind of judge these type of situations in the greater scheme of things. So, yes, he lost by disqualification. But, like, the last visual we had in that fight was him in full mount punching the guy in his face. So, 
let's just say it like that. It, it, it's sad for KB that it ends up in a DQ, but man, need him pretty hard in the head. And but <laughs> what do you want me to say more than that? So that was a, the Canadian performances of the week. Uh, let's go with the interviews, really good interviews with Cal Propolek and Maget Amo. What's up, everybody? We are here this week with the main event of the next Samurai MMA card, a guy that we have not seen in a while and that we are really glad to have back, Cal Prepolek. What's up, man? How's it going, my man? Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay. Like I was saying, super happy to have you on. I know, man, it's getting closer to, closer to fight time. It's been a while since you've been in action, and I know time is, is not really available for you, man. Many things to do, all kinds of stuff. So I'm really happy you, you took the time to be with us for a moment, man. Yeah, no, no, sorry about all the delay, but yeah, I appreciate being on here. Thank you. Yeah, don't worry about that. It's normal, man. But uh, how you feel, man? It's getting uh, close. The yeah. comeback. I'm exciting. Yeah, it's comeback season, so uh, I'm, I'm pumped. Like, I can't wait. Like, I like obviously I used the fighting get a little nervous and all that, but like my excitement is just I'm just happy to be back, and you know I. I I'm so excited to fight again, just showcase all the new skills and my skill set and just how I've evolved over the whole pandemic and lockdown, you know, so I'm excited. I can't wait. Yeah. Before we speak about the fight, I wanted to know, uh, how do you reflect on your UFC run now that it's been like two years? Uh, I, I got some things I feel about it. I'm going to tell you after it, but I wanted to know from, from your part, how, how do you reflect on that run? Um how i would have reflected on it um honestly it, like it's a great it was a great experience and i want to obviously that's my goal is to get back in there and then i want to retire there at the top and uh with the elites of the world in that sport and uh you know um i've learned a lot just to you know be uh for better training better things um what i should do as a fighter uh where it's not Like it is about like fighting and you know obviously beating someone from your skill set to someone else's but at the the high high level it's that inches game especially when i fought nordine just like how calculated and how uh he was good at i guess playing his game better than i was at playing at my game and how to stay focused in that so i know what i must do to be you know at his level or higher and you know i'm always trying to aim higher and be as best as possible so it's uh fight harder train harder fight smart fight easy you know like this it's it's all going to come together in one uh beautiful piece of art so <laughs> for sure man I, i feel like like if there's one word for me to describe your ufc run but i'd say frustrating because like first fight short notice up a weight class against a big, strong guy, Nordini. It's art. He's really technical. Like you say, he's really uh, composed in a fight. And it was a short notice fight. And I feel like you did good in that fight. You didn't win, but you did good. Then you fight Austin Hubbard. Another fight, man, that if you take if you take the takedowns out, I don't know how that sounds uh, while I say it, but... Uh, It's a really good fight. You did some really good stuff in that fight. There were some moments that you could really say, oh, man, Kyle's about to win that fight. That Oh, no, a <laughs> takedown. But you're always able to fight, get up, and never quit in that fight. And like, and after like, you get released, and I'm like, man, we've seen guys with some shit UFC performances, and they don't get cut. And Kyle comes here, short notice, Kinds uh, kind of saves them in a, in a bit because they needed somebody for the, for that Ottawa card, and you were that guy. You were short notice and stuff, so you <laughs> yeah. kind of did them a favor. And then in your fight after, you do super well against like a well schooled lightweight guy that's still there, that's still winning fights, and yeah. then you get released. So it's just really frustrating because the fights we seen the glimpses and flashes that oh he, he he's at his place he's not like below that level he's not getting washed he's not nothing like that's happening so it's really the two fights that make us see all your potential and all that you can accomplish and then it get cuts short after just such a like <laughs> fights man it, it, like i say it's, 
I feel like for me as a fan of Kyle Pribilek, it was frustrating because I, I knew you had so much more to show in the UFC and that man, you could have easily won your fight after and won a, went on a, a streak after, but you kind of got your chance cut short a little bit. So that was my assessment of, you, of your run. <laughs> yeah, uh, there, well, there's a little underlying like issues there. That's why, like, obviously due to the, like what it said in my like uh, paper when with the releasement, uh, with the releasing, sorry. Uh, you know, it was due to, you know, the last result of the fight and due to, you know, basically uh, health issues because uh, the last fight I was in Rabdo and uh, we didn't know why, but the UFC did help by sending me to the States. And then, you know, I was getting help in Canada as well. And I actually got a muscle biopsy surgery to figure out why it was happening and how to prevent it. So um, I'm looking forward to having that not happen again. So We'll be he'll be good and hopefully uh you know do what i do best and you know get that win uh get looked at again and uh you know hopefully get called or even take that same uh same road i did last time take something short notice and uh get ready to give her again so i'll always be ready yeah for sure and the, the these uh these issues like you've been saying it, it kind of i don't know put a, a balm on it a little bit because it's like Oh, yeah, they, they had these issues, so they prefer to let me go. But it's like if you didn't have these issues, maybe they would have kept you, so that can give like a, a like a brighter light for the future. That if I do good in a fight or two, they they'll look at me again and say, "Oh yeah, the guy is as good as uh, we thought he was," and just bring you back. Yeah, that's that's kind of what like my goal is, and like what I'm hoping that they see. You know, that way I'm not like a liability because you know, you don't you don't want to be having underlying issues and then all of a sudden you go into a fight and then all of a sudden you can never fight or do anything again because of you basically not taking care of yourself so you know health is always first and that's basically what i think is their rule and also like my rule too like if i'm not healthy then you know i shouldn't fight but now that i'm healthy everything's you know figured out we can prevent it make everything get uh be good again like it's only a matter of time till I can hopefully, you know, get back to those big leagues and really showcase why I belong and be in the, you know, the proper uh, environment, you know. So that's the goal. Get back to the UFC. <laughs> For sure. So what do you think about this fight, Mikael Dufour? I just spoke to him uh minutes ago he was on my friend show and he even he, even he told me I, i don't really get why he's not in the ufc anymore but i'm super happy to fight a ufc vet so uh, i was wondering uh, on your part how do you feel about this matchup honestly i think it's i think it's great because it's going to show you know you know after i know he just fought recently and you know kudos to him for getting that uh that win in, in the i forgot the league but he yeah, got that yeah cffc in tampa That's i believe Yeah, and he got, you know, he got that quick guillotine and, uh, hey, man, you leave your neck out there, he's going to take it. So uh, anyone will, right? Like, he's he's obviously at a high level and, you know, he's got a good record. He's He's got good personality. He's got good fights. You know, like, uh, even watching him in TKO against my buddy Ronson. So it's like, you know, he's tough. He's durable. You know, he's going he's gonna to come out do what he wants to do and I got to go out and do what I want to do and, you know, showcase my skills and, you know, basically show like there's levels to this and that I'm at this level and, you know, he's, you know, he's got to beat me to show, you know, he, he belongs there too, but I also got to beat him to show I belong back where I belong too. So it's going to be a fun, hard fight. And I, I, I'm excited because of how good he is, you know, uh, he's good. He's tough. Uh, I believe he's at that level. It's just, we just got to showcase uh, who's going to win, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, in my opinion, best fight in Canada this year. I know that there's that unified fight that they're trying to compete with that uh, Graham Park and Mar Marius Chaskiewicz fight. That's pretty good. But, man, lightweights, in Canada, it's always lightweights, featherweights, bantamweights. That's our, be our best divisions. And, man... You got two of the best lightweights in the country who haven't fought each other because there's other good lightweights like Scott Hudson, but you fought Scott Hudson already. And so two of the best 
that haven't fought together. And like you said, you're a UFC vet, so that's cool for him. But for you, he's the young guy coming up right now in that division that's racking up wins, having good records, going to the States and coming up with wins and all that. So he's a guy to look for right now. So like you've been saying, it's the perfect fight for you because if you, you go there and you win, you're right back. You're right back in the conversation as the top, top guy in the country. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, it's as much as it, as it is exciting for him, it's just as exciting for me because it's like, you know, he's obviously high level. He's going to be fighting me, right? So it's like, and I got to fight this guy who's, you know, coming off a nice win, good record, young, athletic, you know, he's, he's good. So yeah, I like fighting good opponents that, you know, give a little challenge and it's just, it brings the best out of me and, you know, I, and I hope to bring the best out of him and we can make it entertaining and obviously... Uh, I want to get that dub. So I'm going to do whatever it takes, whether it's, you know, go to the ground, submit ground and pound, uh, you know, outbox, kickbox, do whatever. And he's, he's going to do the same thing. So, and that's, and that's fine by me. I, I, I encourage, you know, uh, the violence to come out and let's be entertaining. Let's showcase why we belong at the top and why we're the most entertaining. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And uh, how's, the, how's the training been? I know it's tough out here in Ontario too. They're kind of doing everything for us not to train, but I wanted to know uh, how's the training been? Oh, uh, the training's uh, like the first part of the lockdown when everything first started, it was tough because it's like, man, everybody's on the lookout, like making sure people are following the rules. You know, we all got to be, you know, either going to each other's houses or training in garages or secretly meeting up to go train somewhere or train outside. Like, but now that it's like, uh, slowly getting back to where we were before all this lockdown and pandemic, uh, training has been excellent. Like over the past almost, well, I guess like 18 months or almost two years, I went back to, you know, the basics of like where I started with like wrestling and grappling and then, you know, making my level more elite at, at those areas. Cause I can, I'll strike with anybody. I could, I can hang with my own. Like if I can hang with Nordine and striking, I can hang with anybody, you know, and it, especially with only like a week notice. So if, if with a fight, with a whole like fight camp, I, I, I wonder how that fight would go again. You know, it just, it, he was just that high level and I, I found it fun. Like he was, he was definitely a, a good uh, matchup there. He's, he's real smart, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just uh, now, like, I'm kind of losing my thought here. Um, <laughs> Don't worry. The, the way, like, training is going now, just, like, how everything, we're doing things and just managing everything for specific things or uh, just doing, like, cage work, wrestling, uh, pad work, you know, just constant drills, situational things, um, you know, the the technical sparring, the, the, the drills, the you know, in the strength conditioning, just putting everything together in this nice little, uh, like all the ingredients into this little formula to become, you know, that top elite athlete, that fighter. And that's, uh, that's what I want to bring out in this fight. Are you still in Windsor at MTC? Uh, yeah, I'm still, I'm still, uh, in Windsor and I, I'm still at MTC. Um, I'm cross training at a lot of gyms right now. Like MTC is my home, but you know, I've been cross training at, uh, Tecumseh Jiu Jitsu, at uh, hybrid, um, border city boxing. Like I've been going like literally everywhere. And then, you know, I plan, well, I have four weeks. I plan to go cross train at some other gyms in Ontario, you know, maybe go to London, go to the adrenaline or, uh, you know, even go to, uh, some other gyms in Toronto or, um, like Mississauga, wherever locally, right. Like just to work with these high elite guys, uh, that have been there as well. So, um, it's just crunch time in these last few weeks. And then, do the hard part and then have fun after for sure man so november 19th everything goes according to plan uh, how does it end that's my hand raised man <laughs> always you always <laughs> have that vision believe in it even you know fight with everything in your heart and everything in your mind and uh foresee things to come right for sure, man. It's going to be an amazing night, man. Really, we're really starting out here to, to feel the buzz now that, because, uh, man, I got to tell you, it was, even when they said November 19, I, I was like, okay, let, let's see, man, because each and every week there's a new thing. Oh, the, now you, you can do this, but not this anymore. Or, oh, you need to go there, but have this to go. So really complicated, but now 
man, we've got tickets on sale. We've got an arena. We've got a date. We've got people buying tickets. We've got people are so hyped. Uh, I spoke with the, the, the promoter. He, he, he been telling me that some guys, they're coming back for more tickets and he's not even sure he's going to be able to give more tickets to every guy on the card if they <laughs> need to, since like tickets have been selling out really, really fast. And it's a cool place where, they, where they're doing the event. Uh, I just watched the... Uh, There was a boxing card uh, there uh, on, uh, was it Friday, Thursday or Friday? I don't know. But it was uh, Oscar Rivas. It was a big card presented on ESPN and stuff. It was, uh, I think, uh, uh -huh. Group Yvon Michel. And I was looking at their setup. And, and it's pretty cool. It's, it's like a smaller theater. So I think on stage, they're putting like VIP tables. Okay. The cage is going to be just below the stage. There's going to be lots of floor seats and a full balcony. And man, it seemed that, that the boxing event, it run pretty smoothly, like the place for the entrances and the, 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 the rooms back there to, to train and warm up. It seemed like it worked out pretty well. So I'm pretty pumped about the venue, to be honest. I think it's going to be good. It's not going to be too much people, like 800 to 1,000, I believe. But man, people are so hyped and <laughs> like, I can't wait because I've been to the, the BTC card too in Burlington. Uh, recently yep. and uh like it, man it was fucking crazy like people were going nuts just to see some fights like most of the fights there were pro debuts and stuff but people were going absolutely crazy a guy just fucking jumped into the crowd like he was jose aldo after his fight and people yeah. were going nuts so i feel like we're gonna have a hella energy in that place man uh, on november 19 it's gonna be a great great night Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Like even you talking about it, I'm like, man, this is going to be so cool. Like just, just to be back and fighting and just like the crowd and just the, everything being that much closer to normal and just everyone can be living again and enjoying their lives. <laughs> yeah, be for sure, man. And another thing that is going to be pretty cool. I know it's, It's not the same promotion. It's not the same people that are running it. TKO is, is not anymore, basically. But yeah. In the later stages of TKO, especially in these weight class, we had that kind of, let's not say rivalry because nobody wants to kill each other. Like you, Big Fall respects you, you respect them. But there was that kind of rivalry between like the Adrenaline guys, the Ontario guys and the, the, the Quebec guys. Or there was like Malcolm Gordon got a belt, Jesse Gordon got a, a Jesse, Jesse Ronson. Sorry, Jesse, yeah. why do I fuck you up like that? One of my <laughs> favorite fighters ever, Jesse Ronson. But uh Like all these guys, TJ, TJ and Tony were, were wrecking shit out here. So it's <laughs> kind of, it's the new era of MMA, but still in the main event, our good old best in Quebec, best in Ontario for the belt. Let's just fight it out and see who comes out on top, man. It's, it's yeah. perfect. It's awesome. just perfect. Yes, sir. <laughs> How do you feel about being the bad guy, though? Like people, they're not going to be rooting for you out here, man. Uh Yeah, it's the same thing, like, even when I would go fight in the States, like, they, you know, or even, like, if I'm fighting a hometown guy, like, you know, at first, you know, they may boo, but, you know, the way uh, how I am as a fighter and how I entertain, like, you may boo me at the start, but you'll cheer me on after because of, like, I'm going to bring you joy and fulfillment because I want I, I wanna be that entertaining fighter. Like, you know, I want to be, like, that Dustin Poirier that that Vondelay Silva like that violence that volume that that whole charismatic and that that aura of just being that that dominant athlete that fighter you know be be that savage you know bring the violence bring what the fans want to see you know even if it gets to the ground be a Khabib and just smash everybody <laughs> yeah for sure and like people they're gonna say what they want to say but man Right now, when I'm posting about Jesse Ronson on my page, or I'm posting about uh, Malcolm or TJ, or everybody's looking out, even people from Quebec, because they saw them fight and they like them now, they respect them now. And since everybody's moved on from the, the small Quebec, Ontario fights, we're just rooting for, for everybody because we're all Canadians. And Ronson may have come and beat our guys, but now he's in the UFC and everybody wants him to win, you know? So it's going to be the same thing for you, man. Yeah, well, that's the thing, right? Like, if once it's like hometown guy versus like an outside guy it's uh you know it's you're always going to root for your hometown guy or cheer for your teammate or whatever but once you once you make it to like the top everybody like from the whole country is like you know let 
we're on your back. We got you. And it's, that's, that's what's so great about Canada. You know, we, yeah. they every Canadian athlete and they're just pushing for us and they just want us to, they want us to succeed. They want us to be like the Hominics, the Stouts, the GSPs, the Patrick Cotes, you know, like all those savages. <laughs> Yup, and it's cool too because uh, there there has been a lot of lots of Canadians on the contender series, and man, it seems like it's just an excuse to sign you now. Like, oh yeah, Mike Malat, I had a good fight. I finished the guy, and he's Canadian. Come over here, and like Jasmine, same thing for her. So she's Canadian. We're gonna sign her. Everybody, so man, like fuck, just win and get to the contenders, and then just be in Canadian and winning a fight. I feel it's enough because Dana knows, man. He just needs that one guy, like yeah. that one, that one Canadian guy that's like GSP, and he's gonna be able to fill arenas in Montreal, Toronto, Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver, all over the place with all these Canadian fighters. So, like, he knows and he wants it, and who, who doesn't want it? So, really exciting times. I'm gonna let you go, man. Really happy to, to have the chance to speak to you today. But I'm gonna leave you with the final word before uh, we leave. Anything you want to say? Shout some people out. Anything? The floor is yours, man. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, first, like, obviously, all the sponsors. Uh, you know, I don't have the full list with me yet. Uh, but you know, for future sponsors, thank you so much. Uh, all my teammates coaches everybody who's with me day in and day out um obviously my girlfriend who uh you know that i live with <laughs> just helped me and yeah, what's up with this shit man of seeing her guy go in and fight and that that must be tough man these girls are riders man <laughs> yeah you know it's uh it must be love right <laughs> like for them to deal with that that's that's not that's not easy that's a, that's a lot of stress and anxiety right there <laughs> and dealing with uh, the guys who got to wait or cut weight oof, that's the worst time <laughs> <laughs> we're just moody but uh yeah all the gyms like uh like i mentioned earlier border city boxing hybrid my main home mtc uh to come see jujitsu um you know and all like i said all the people that are helping me there's so many I, that i could list and just name but I, i can't be here forever but i'll make up once this like post is up I'll, i'll name all of you and add everybody so uh <laughs> yeah thank you to everybody and obviously thank you to samurai mma for uh reaching out to me and having me on your card. Uh, I can't wait to perform and entertain as best as possible and uh, show you what a uh, true elite is. For sure. Thank you. Cal yeah. Prepolek, one of the best, if not the best lightweight in Canada. Been looking for, uh, forward <laughs> to seeing you back in the cage and it's going to be here in Montreal, my home. I'm going to be there in cage side. So I'm so happy about that. Thanks a lot, my man. And uh, thanks, thank for, thanks everybody for... Uh, for watching man thanks a lot bye thank you see ya hey what's up everybody the internet has been trying to stop us but there is nothing stopping us we've got maged amu in this bitch oh this way this way there he is let's go maged what's up not much yourself oh i'm good man like i said really complicated usually stream yards stream yard works like so well it's super easy people connect and they're there and it wasn't working then nothing was working tonight but i got you here i'm so happy to have you here <laughs> How's life, my man? And my life's good. Just been training, you know, living life with the kids and stuff. So it's been good. Yeah, for sure. I wanted to, to talk to you because we just had the news uh, lately that you are going to be involved in another major fight. Like, what a what a comeback year for you. Uh, you've been involved in al already a fight that we're going to talk about in a few moments. Uh, but now a, a second huge high-level high fight, high-profile fight against one of the best 45ers in Canada. I just want to know, man, it's coming in a month. How, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I actually asked for this fight. There was a couple other fights that were offered to me, and uh, they were, you know, not as hard fights, and I wanted to uh, challenge myself, which I usually do in every fight. And uh, the opportunity came with Alex Morgan. I know he's a tough opponent, and he's beating some tough guys. So I thought, why not? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I just wanted to know what happened with you, man, because uh, you were fighting and then you were not fighting. And then there was a unified event and Lucas Newfeld was supposed to fight Neil Anderson. And then he yeah. wasn't fighting him. And then we hear Maggot Amo is fighting him. And I was like, oh shit, that's true. This guy is pretty good, man. I, I can't believe he's coming <laughs> back. And then you come back and you have the performance that we're going to talk about in, in a few moments. But I just wanted to know, uh, like, were you not fighting anymore? Or wasn't just things working out? What, what was that long pause that you took? 
Uh, actually, I got knee surgery, so I had a major knee surgery for a uh, couple of years there, and I'm taking, trying to recover properly and stuff like that. So I took the time off that I needed. Now I'm back to fully recovered, and uh, I was training at the time anyways, and then uh, I was told that Lucas couldn't fight. So I stepped up and uh, took the fight, and it was uh, it was good. Yeah, man, like three years off, short notice, but like sh short-ish notice, let's say. You, you knew... Uh, couple of weeks how many times did four you know weeks. it was about four weeks it was four good. weeks it was yeah okay time. so sh short ish notice let's say it but still neil anderson coming from 155 one of the better fighters in in canada his good. name it yeah his name has good. been made is the guy he's saying oh he beats this this ammo guy he's going to the ufc probably and you just come in and one of the better <laughs> fights of the year and you spoil it just let me know uh, like how you feel about this performance after all that time that surgery that that injury just coming back and having that fight actually mentally i felt great i felt like myself in there i felt like i was having fun and enjoying the process you know but uh conditioning you can tell i was pretty tired <laughs> i was pretty gas right off the bat and uh, it was because uh, i wasn't really doing much cardio stuff and i was because of my knee so i wasn't able to run or do any of the stuff that i normally do for my cardio so it was one of those processes where i have to change now for this next fight because i know Coming into Alex Morgan, it'll be, I need all the cardio I can get because this guy's a tough, tough opponent. And uh, no, it was good. I'm glad the, it turned out the way it did. Mentally, I was there. Mentally, I'm there again. And I, I feel like the fire is lit up again, you know, and uh, I'm back at her. Yeah. And I think that like what we really learned from that fight is that like each round, each minute of the fight, you're going to be in there, you're going to fight, e even though like there were some rounds that just didn't go your way in that fight at all. There are some rounds that you did way better in that fight, but still late in the fight, you were still there, you were still fighting. Some people may say that oh, he, he wasn't winning that fight, but you wasn't winning until you won because each second yeah, each exactly. moment of the fight, you were in there and you were fighting and you were being like a, an amazing opponent for the guy. And in the end, I think it, it was just too much for him. I think you're right. There was too much for him. I think um, I, I didn't want to quit. There was no quitting me. There was a lot of riding on that fight for me. I had uh, lots of family back home watching. And uh, I just want, didn't want to disappoint, and I, I, I gave it everything I had. I just didn't want to give up. <laughs> nah, for sure. And, uh, you know, Quebec, Alberta, it's pretty far. So sometimes we just, like, don't get the news and around here, and we don't really know the, the fighters too well. So when that fight was announced, a lot of people were asking me, like, uh, who's, that, who's that guy? Is he good? Is he? And then asking lots of questions. And the only thing that I, I answered them is that since 2014, the only guy that beat you is Jesse Arnett. So you can make your calculations from there. We've seen Jesse Arnett in Quebec, in TKO, having like the most high-level fights in Canada. So I was like, make your calculations from there. If the only guy that can beat him is Jesse Arnett, like in the recent years, must mean the guy's pretty good. Yeah, and the Jesse Arnett fight, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't there mentally. I wasn't prepared physically or you know, nothing. I just kind of took that fight on a week's notice just for the money, really. And um, if I can go back, I'd probably uh, I'd get a rematch with him for sure. I would love to get some revenge, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, that's for sure. Man. But, you know, other opportunities are arising and uh, I'll take what I can get. Yeah, no, okay. like you said, after the, the, the unified fight, you win the belt, you're the unified champion. Now people are looking at, at you as like a Canadian champion, like let's say unified bfl that that's the big promotions right now they're the ones that have been running for the longest that that's are right, putting on right. the, the biggest fights and now you've got people out east like samurai that are trying to come up and organize big fights too but in the last few years like becoming the unified champ becoming the bfl champ that that means a lot to, to, to your standing in the country and now people are, are starting to look at you as one of the best featherweights in the country. And now you just have the chance to fight the number one guy in your next fight. So I guess that feels pretty good, right? That feels really good, actually. Yeah. Um, he's the next guy that uh, I think that will push me to the, where I want to be. I think this is the fight that's going to, you know, kind of make it for me kind of thing, you know? And uh, well, I'm getting older. I don't have that much time left. So I want to try and take what I can get for now and uh, see where it takes me. And, uh, Yeah, just train hard for this and uh, put on a good show. I always try to put on a good show. I always try and finish the fights, you know. Never leave it to the judges because you never know what's going to happen. 
So you always try and finish the fights, and I'm um, coming into this fight. I'm gonna try and finish it uh, early in the rounds. For sure, man. And when you look at at uh, recently, guys like like uh, Chad Anneliger has been to the Contender Series. Maybe like not the guy That's with true. the best record because he started his career like quite slowly. Let's say it that way. But then just had the chance to go on the Contender Series, and you could just see the experience in in that guy. It wasn't a tough fight because every fight's tough over there. If you you win, you basically make it. So oh, exactly, wasn't a, yeah, yeah, it wasn't a tough fight, but you just could see the experience, all the the the, the fight very that he had before. It was very intelligent, yes. Yeah, all the losses too. I feel like this guy has become such a good grappler since all his submission losses that you could see that if if you come in, you beat Alex Morgan, the guy's been at the top of the division for years in Canada. You become the double champion in two of the biggest promotions. How can they not look at you? And that's exactly my uh, that's my goal exactly. Sure, man. It is. It's what you want to do. And uh, I wanted to know about the training, man. How is it going back here? Just resume, man. To be quite honest, we're starting to feel like we can train and do stuff. I wanted to know back in Alberta, how, how was it for you? Uh, Alberta is good, man. We uh, Our training facilities are pretty much the same. Um, we're training at full, full capacity right now. We're going pretty good. Uh, we're following the rules and everything now, so it's good. And uh, we got lots of training partners coming in these days and everyone's kind of slowly going back to normal kind of thing. So fingers crossed it continues this way and uh, things start to open up again. I miss uh, miss the old times, you know? Uh, yeah, for sure, man. Uh, that's uh, that's for sure, man, because e even us, like we're, we're restarting, but like it's not, and there's the vaccine stuff that I just don't want to get into, but like it affects us because there's some people that, can't basically come back to the gym because of that shit so no exactly. it's not it's not the same like atmosphere in the gym it's not because we, we've lost some people and we've lost like yeah with some white belts some blue belts or we lost some purple belts too we've lost some like some good guys that man i want to roll with them it's been a long time but we just like can't right now and it sucks but it's a good feeling too to just feel like more and more it's getting back to normal and everybody And there's just people that got super fat during COVID too, and they just don't oh, want to yeah, train exactly. anymore, man. What you to do, right? <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, we're kind of getting these people back here slowly in the gym. And, and the, 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 but I feel like this show, Samurai, that's really going to help for us out here. Because, I think so too. I yeah, because now... Happens. I hope it stays open, and I hope the show goes on, and we can perform and, you know, come there and do what we got to do. Yeah, for sure. Because now you see other fighters, other people that like they're they're not quite resuming training, but now they see, oh, there's a show. There's actually people yeah, exactly. I know that are gonna be fighting, and now I want to fight too. So it, it motivates people to get back to it. I feel a lot of shows are getting canceled at the same time, though. So it's one of those things still where you still gotta be cautious, right? Yeah, for sure. But man, I feel better than ever now, man. We've got tickets on sale. We've got a date. We've got an yeah, arena. We've got, like it's super fucking set now. Like, and I, I, I speak often with, with Daniel, who's the, the, the main guy, the promoter. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, like there's not many tickets left, man. Like really but, not yeah. many tickets left. It's going to be. And they just recently allowed us to be full capacity in the... Uh, In the like you see Bell Center in Montreal, the Canadians they can play under yeah, full yeah, capacity. Yeah. So it's gonna be the same thing for us. So it's not the the, the way that the, the, the room's gonna be set up. I feel like a thousand people max can get into the place, but everybody everybody's gonna be there. Like that's amazing. Fighters so around excited. here, they've been so selling excited. like a hundred tickets each. So there's gonna be atmosphere in the crowd for sure, man. Good, good. At least there'll be lots of people watching everywhere, everywhere in the world, people are gonna be watching. Yeah, for sure. How do you feel about coming in and being like the bad guy, the guy that like Alex Morgan's really popular out here. He's gonna sell hella tickets. Oh, You're gonna course, have his crowd. Uh, gonna have his crowd and, like not being too happy about you, uh, especially if you do well. So how you, how you feel about that? Well, just like I was uh, out in Edmonton, I wasn't the favorite guy there either. Everyone was booing me as I was coming in, and I felt like I was like, this is my home. This is where I my home. Same thing. Everyone's booing the other guy. So this is the same feeling. But then after the fight, everybody turns around and cheers for me because they know, you know. <laughs> so I'm probably going to do the same thing over there. Yeah, no, of course, because like when you go to a, a local MMA show, usually you, you know fucking MMA. Like, you not, know. Yeah, like exactly. it's, no casuals are going to be in there that night. So if you come in, have a good performance, people are, are going to appreciate that. They're going to respect that. And they, man, we just want to see fights and exciting exactly. stuff. Man. It's been so long. 
Oh, exactly, man. And that's every show, too. Every show. If you put on a good fight, you'll win the crowd no matter what. Yeah, no, for sure, man. People, uh, we like MMA and like we like our Canadian fighters. Maybe you're from oh, Alberta yeah. and you're you're coming in to fight like the Quebec guy. But if you, if you win and you move on, the people are fucking gonna root for you. We need more people to root for in that sport. Like at, at the course. moment, we've got couple Canadians that starting to to bubble in the UFC. We've had guys that have been there for two or three years already. But I feel like really now it's the next crop of Canadian that. Are starting to get more attention and like people are excited because we we need people to root for we need people to well no to we watch. do that's exactly it yeah because like to be honest if you look at at the two last weeks the only reason i watched was because of lupi godinez I, i don't i don't give a fuck basically about any of these fights that they were putting on in the last few weeks like they were trash cars like trash yeah cars. there's been some shitty ones there, right yeah But we had a Canadian girl that we know that we love, so we watched. Right? We just we watched. have to. That's right. Yeah. Uh, where do you train? At the Canadian Martial Arts Center out oh, in Lethbridge, Alberta. Okay. Okay. That's a that's a good gym. Speak about your gym, your partners, your coach, all that. Really good gym, man. Oh, it's an amazing gym. There's no place other I want to be. I'm always there. I've been there for over 10 years now. I can't uh, I can't speak for a better place to train at. All the guys there are helping me. The coaches, everybody, like it's an amazing environment. Just the people itself, not just even the people that train, just the people that come in and out and stuff like that. You know, everybody just so supportive, you know. It's awesome. It feels like a family there. It's a second home, is what it is. It's it's amazing. Yeah, for sure. And like to be honest, I, I see so much of Lee Main and people from that gym. Like, Man, this guy is the only fucking guy in Canada that's gonna fight the same guy two times in a year. He, he just doesn't give a shit. He, like, I'm gonna no. fight that guy. He's I amazing. Didn't take a week's notice. Yeah, he beat me the first time. I don't give a shit. I'm a fighter. I'm gonna go out there and fight. And you see that in fighters from the gym. Like you taking like a shortish notice fight against fucking Neil Anderson or just people like walking in the week off and oh man. We're all out there. We've got a crew. Here's another guy from CMAC. You've got a, fi a fight falling through. Give it to him. He's going to take it. It's just like... Of course, that's what we do. We fight. It. Yeah, you can see the mentality of a Lee Main into all of you guys. You're just like crazy coming in ready to fight and fighting every second of the fight. That's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. Big shout out to Lee Main and fucking pioneer and legend. What a guy. Hell yeah, he is. He's the man. <laughs> Cool, man. So uh, it was really fun. I'm going to let you go. But before, I'm going to leave you with the, the final word. Anything uh, you want to say, anything I forgot to talk about, any people you want to shout out, the floor is yours, my man. Oh, I just want to say thank you to everybody that's been helping me train and everybody that's supporting me. Um, Lethbridge and area, everywhere. Uh, especially my coach, Lee, me and Neil Barry, all those guys that are helping me, Jordan, me and uh, I just want a huge thank you to all of them and my family and to... Uh, to Samurai for letting me, uh, give me this opportunity and to Alex Mora, Morgan, you know, for taking this fight and uh, letting us put on a show and let's do this. I'm ready to go. Fuck yeah, my man. Like I've been saying in, the, in a couple of weeks, there was no lineup to fight Alex Morgan. It was tough. We didn't even think we we're going to have Alex Morgan on the card. And then there's like the unified champion that comes out of the woodwork. And he's like, we're going to have a champion versus champion fight. I want the toughest fights. And that's what I go for is the toughest ones. Not the easy ones, but the toughest ones. It's the only way you move forward. Let's go. I'm so happy to hear that. That's going to be an amazing fight. Do not miss it. If you're elsewhere in Canada, Fight Network, Fight TV is going to be like, you can't miss this event. It's going to be on TV. It's going to be on your tablet, on your internet. If you, you be everywhere. TV, it's going to be everywhere. So don't miss it. Magadamu is going to be the co-main event. This guy's crazy. He's always amazing when he fights. You're not going to want to miss you. that, man. So thanks a lot, my man. I'm really happy to, to no have worries. a chance to you Have a good evening, you. my friend. Of course, and I'll see you there, man. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, man. Take care. Bye. Bye.